Alright guys, today I want to talk about one of my personal favorite games of all time, and that is Heart of Darkness, released in 1998 for the PlayStation 1 and PC. Now, I played the PlayStation 1 version and I was totally blown away at the time. I got it used um, for a couple of bucks at Hollywood Video, and I just could not believe what I was playing. Uh, Heart of Darkness is a cinematic, kind of action puzzle platformer, and as you can see, the animations are just great. And those of you that are wondering, yes, this is by the creators of Another World or Out of This World, it bears a striking resemblance to it. And basically the story is you're Andy, the kid you see there with the gun. You're on Earth and suddenly there's a solar eclipse and your dog is taken away by these shadowy creatures. And the young heroic adventurer that you are, you have a, you basically build an airplane kind of spaceship thing that you saw in the beginning and you take off and search for your dog and you end up crash landing on this planet here which is filled with different shadowy creatures and everything now there's no HUD to this game or anything like that no no health bar or anything it's basically one hit kills um, it's very very challenging despite having an E rating and you know looking like a kids game if you looked at the cover and the cinematics you would think this game was made for 8 year olds but no this game has tons of challenge and what I'm showing you right here is the beginning of the game when you first crash land on the planet and Andy's equipped with his electricity gun and you know he's able to zap these things and dispose of them really quickly but in a little bit here you'll see that he doesn't have that gun for long now the first thing that you will all notice about this game is how well the animations are done just look at the black creatures and how well they fly I mean these things are animated spectacularly I mean even Andy his jumping animation there all done really fluidly and, you know, it, it might seem like a cheap way to do it. All the shadow monsters are pitch dark, you know, there's not much detail to them. But honestly, that's what makes this game so unique. Almost all of the enemies in the game are drawn in that unique way. Um, just different shadow creatures, all pitch dark. And right here is an example of just how well cinematic CG sequences are tied into the gameplay. Now, there are slight pauses as you're moving throughout the game. Um, you know, it kind of interrupts it a little bit. There might be like a one or two second pause as it loads the CG sequence. But most of the time, they're put seamlessly into the gameplay, as you saw right there. Now, here's one of my favorite parts of the game as the enemy creeps up behind Andy there. Just the animation is awesome. Now, the game is very linear. Most of the game, almost the entire game, you're moving from left to right with very little backtracking. But when it does require backtracking, it's almost always tied into a puzzle and it's not very tedious so it's mostly a very linear game it's pretty short you can depend upon your skill you can beat this game and how many times you have to try over some sequences you can beat the game easily in anywhere from five to maybe eight hours it is on two discs but that's because of the CG sequences that are integrated into the game and they take up a lot of space sort of like a game like the old school Prince of Persia's and everything Heart of Darkness does require a lot of precision jumping and you have to be really accurate with your jumps as it's very punishing if you miss and here you're going to see just how well CG sequences are tied in with the game here look at that, look at that animation that there was seamless with no loading times and the animation happens and you just keep on going with the gameplay and here's another part stuff like that just really brings life to this game and that's why it's classified as a cinematic platformer because at the time on systems, you know, on the PC there were quite a few games like this, but in terms of console based games, you really didn't see too many platformers in this type of style. And of course, if you want a game that's just like Heart of Darkness, you gotta play Out of This World. It's the predecessor to Heart of Darkness. And it's much, much more challenging. And the settings in Heart of Darkness are also very varied. As you see now, I come to a forest, I'm out of the canyon setting. And the game keeps things fresh by changing up the locations pretty often. And this is also where the game starts getting pretty tough, as you see, as I miss that jump there and get eaten up by a water snake. Um, Andy also dies in, like, really painful ways in this game. I'm surprised. For having an E rating, this kid's getting his back broken. He's getting his foot torn off of his body. I mean, eaten alive. He dies in some pretty painful ways. Alright, now this scene here is probably the first real puzzle in the game. Because you come to a dead end and you got to figure out what to do. You can't go that way because there's a plant guarding it and it's a dead end. So you gotta do a little bit of backtracking and figure out how you're gonna advance. Now, once I climb up this canyon here, you're gonna see a good example of how little CG animated sequences are integrated into the game, like that vine right there. That's a CG movie sequence right there, integrated into the game. 
So that plant's blocking the way and there's one way to get rid of him. Climb back up the cliff here and go to the right. And you can pull him down by jumping on what appears to be just the dangling vine there. So you take care of him and now you're going to be able to advance. So guys, that's basically the Heart of Darkness. I just wanted to give you a little preview. The game is pretty easy to find. I mean, it's not a rare title by any means. You can go on eBay and get this game complete with, you know, both discs, the case, everything like that for anywhere from $5 to $15 for the PlayStation version. But be warned for you collectors out there, if you want this game truly complete, it actually came with 3D glasses to view the opening CG movie in, in 3D, which is actually pretty cool. So there you go, guys. This is a personal favorite of mine, and I highly, highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.